Hey, Miss Lucas. It's You guys don't have to worry about what's on the back. You're only doing the signs that says railways cross the nation.
maybe racial and ethnic lines, or do you think that's more dealing with socioeconomic status? I would say socioeconomic status. It's, there's no right or wrong answer. Like, I'm just asking for opinion. Yeah. I mean, people still today have uh, Okay, so you say that there's still a lot of that discrimination based on like ethnicity and different things like that. Okay, yeah, well, we got things going. Yeah, that's gotta be both. If you if you think about it, I mean, none of these answers are wrong because there is still happening very much today. So are we seeing some lasting impacts here? Very much so. Let's go. And I was also want to throw in there like what what I said, like uh, how parts of like Wyoming and stuff, how like some Native Americans have their own parts of land that the government has given them. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. So one of the things that you guys have had to do um, and we've been talking about um, is understanding westward expansion and what it means to have conquered all of these different territories. And I use the word conquered there for a reason. Um, like to, for the United States to have expanded and annexed parts of the United States that weren't necessarily ours to annex, right? Um, but the whole point of it is this. So the learner will assess the competing forces of expansionism, nationalism, and sectionalism. Yesterday we talked specifically about the railroads. And with this sheet right here that you guys had, um, let's look at this information. So this is testing not only your knowledge of content with what we talked about yesterday, but also your ability to read charts and graphs and go through that stuff together. So um, it says read the information in the boxes carefully, then use it to answer the questions below. Um, you will then understand how the railroads gained importance, okay? So what we see here is basically a timeline, right? Of how things happened with the railroad. Okay, so somebody asked for me, um, who developed the plan for a uniform time system? Professor who developed it? <coughs> Professor C. F. Dowling. What's his name? Dowling. Professor C. F. Dowling. Okay, and where did you find that at? Which box? Uniform time plan adopted. Exactly, so it's right here. So if you didn't get that one, it's right here. Professor C.F. Dowd. Okay, who founded the Grange? Oliver Kelly. Oliver Kelly. Oliver Kelly. Kelly. You raised your hand. I appreciate it. You were trying. Okay, Oliver Kelly. And where did you find that information? Yes, it's pretty obvious, right? Yeah. Okay. All right, number three. What convinced the United States to adopt the uniform time plan? For the country to be on the same schedule. Why would that be important? So that there isn't a bunch of confusion on where you end up on what time. Yeah. Right the railway. Absolutely. And so trains don't do what? Run into each other. Yeah, so trains don't run into each other and people are getting from one place to the next on time. And so the whole idea, whole idea of being somewhere by a certain point, this is when it really started to hit home. If you remember from the Industrial Revolution, what was really started like and applied during this century? Time. So before the Industrial Revolution, did people really have a centered piece of machinery or a clock that they worked their lives around? No. Sun up, you get up. Sun goes down, you go down to sleep. You gotta go to sleep. And so basically our life was ran by the revolving of the world. And then as industry brought about change, it brought about social change too. Same here. Uh, number four. What did the railroad acts provide um, the railroad companies? Number four. What two companies are we talking about here? Yeah. So the Union Pacific and the Credit Mobile. And you'll get that when we get through the Civil War and Reconstruction 
units. Again, this is kind of previewing that information too. Okay, so number five, what was the Fredit Mobile? Yes, so it was the actual company that like funded the Union Pacific Railroad. Number six, what legislation established a commission to oversee railroad rates? Congress. What specific part of Congress? So where, where would you find that information? If you look at the last box right here, the Interstate Commerce Act, that's what actually was responsible for setting those rates. So the Interstate Commerce Commission. Yeah, make sure that you are looking at all of the boxes, all part of the time. Okay. Number seven, when was the Transcontinental Railroad completed? 1869. 1869, very good. Last but not least, when was the Interstate Commerce Act passed? 1887. 1887. Oh. Okay. All right, so you guys can put this information away. And we got five little slides that we need to get through, uh, and then you guys will start to present. So, uh, you're just writing these out. I'll explain the other sheets of paper for the power in just a few minutes. So for right now, you're still just writing out these slides, okay? Okay, so yesterday we talked about some introductory technology pieces. So the railroad... Um, different things like that. We also talked about what life was like on the West, people living in sod houses. Uh, we talked about women in the West, uh, Squirrel Tooth Alice, and uh, Hurdy Gurdy houses, all kinds of interesting uh, activities out on the West. Uh, we talked about who were the original cowboys. African Americans, and they were known as what? The, the, Buffalo. the Buffalo Soldiers. Okay, Soldiers. so there's a lot of different things we talked about, but we need to talk about some changes in industry and technology. We'll try one more time. Yellow. One three. There we go. So, yeah, I'll get it just a second. So there are some changes, not only in technology that are about transportation, communication, different things like that, but there are also changes in agriculture and how people farm, how people get the goods that they need. So dry farming was something 